So it is one of the ways in which we can show care for and solidarity with each other and allow each other to live less restricted lives without seeing a resurgence in the virus. So please, Nicola Sturgeon talking this morning. And now Boris Johnson, pictured for the first time today wearing a mask in public. He says the government is going to look at ways to make sure people wear masks in shops. But for some in the scientific community, it's a pretty divisive issue. We know beyond any doubt whatsoever that this virus is spread by the things that come out of your mouth and a little bit less by things that come out of your nose. We also know because it's common sense that if, for example, you cough and you hold your hand in front of your mouth, it gets wet. In other words, things that get put in front of your mouth stop the wet stuff coming out. She's got some high profile backers. Healthcare organisations around the world recommend mask use. A Nobel Prize winning biologist and president of the Royal Society, Venki Ramakrishnan, says masks could avert a second lockdown. It's not a 100% thing, but it'll reduce the likelihood of that happening. Uh, then why not do it? I mean, people were not used to wearing seat belts in cars, you know, a couple, few decades ago, and now it's essentially uh, normal to do that uh, because we recognise its, uh, its value. But not everyone agrees it's that simple. Many interventions used in healthcare have benefits, but they also may have harms associated with them. These harms should be studied as much as any benefits. Critics say the studies to measure the impact of face coverings on the spread of the virus don't necessarily look at the unintended effects on people and on society. Well, we need to understand very much more about the implications for people with various sorts of sensory disabilities, uh, not just the people who uh, have difficulties with hearing uh, and depend on lip reading, uh, but there's also concern from people with visual impairments uh, who can't adequately understand the, uh, the location of other people um, who depend on their senses for that. Uh, we have the, the impact on people with various kinds of anxiety disorders, people with, uh, with autism spectrum disorders, uh, people with various kinds of breathing difficulties. Uh, there's quite a significant minority of the population uh, who do get harmed uh, by this. Another criticism is the evidence for masks is not high quality. It doesn't come from what are known as randomised control trials. These are considered the best form of evidence. People are assigned to get a mask or not, and the results compared. But what we do have is evidence from, uh, I think, about 100 countries now which have introduced cloth face coverings or indeed other uh, kinds of face coverings. Some are using medical masks. And every single country that has mandated or strongly recommended the use of face coverings by the public has been followed uh, a few days later by a drop in the spread of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The issue has divided colleagues in Professor Greenhalgh's department at Oxford University. Professor Carl Hennigan is based just down the corridor there. He says for drugs, we expect clinical trials, but when it comes to interventions like masks, lower standards seem to be acceptable. He also cautions against reusing masks. Unfortunately, when things feel right, when they're common sense, they still have the equal chance of harming you as opposed to benefiting you. And let's be clear, the high quality trial evidence for cloth masks suggests they increase your rates of reinfection. And that's incredibly important when you think of the sort of hygiene procedures that you've got to go through if you carry a mask around with you. So if we are gonna go down this route, we should be thinking of disposable masks and the cost to that will add an in inequality to society because there are many people who just cannot afford to pay for them, particularly at the current cost they are when you go and try and buy them. The debate is deeply political. Newsnight understands that the World Health Organization committee that reviewed the evidence for the use of face coverings in public didn't back them. But after political lobbying, the WHO now recommends them. It doesn't matter whether the something is effective or not. Governments, the demand is that governments do something. And what we, we're seeing here, I think, is, is a latching on to the idea that, uh, you know, masks are something that a government could do, you know, which is cheap, which is symbolic, um, 
uh, but which is probably not particularly effective. But while the debate splits the academic community, there are many who argue we cannot wait for gold standard evidence to accrue. We need to take all precautions, mask wearing, hand washing and social distancing to stop the virus in its tracks.